camera. So this is um, the plasma switch, uh, what we call a floating switch, just to, to show you the difference between that. I don't do a touch off and I'll explain to you in the video a little bit later. But effectively what happens is when the torch sits in here, this holds the torch, as the torch goes, as this goes up, as you'll see it goes up, it goes near the switch, the switch activates and then it allows the torch to go down. So there's a set height that I determine as it goes up based on the height of the torch and you'll see that in the video that I have posted with the plasma cutter actually doing the cutting. If you look very closely, you'll see how this comes up. The switch then activates, it then knows the height from there to where the switch is and, and off it goes. So there's pros and cons to both. Hey all, just wanted to talk to you about some micro switches and limit switches is what we use micro switches for limit switching on CNC machines. As we have here on the right hand side, we have a breakout board that we're all aware of. And on the left hand side, we have a micro switch. And it's just very quickly to talk to you about how to set it up and connect it. So what this does is it tells us when we've hit a limit of something. So we use these this principle to say when you're homing a machine and you want it to come to the same place and point in, in, a, given t in a given space, you'll set it up that it touches a switch and we hope that there's lots of repeatability on that switch so it comes back. I'll talk about that in another video, but it comes back to the same position so that you can set your machine to zero, zero, <clears throat> and you can also set your, your Z as well to whatever the height is that you want to set to that. These micro switches, the principle around the micro switch or these switches and these contacts is the same for probing as well. It works on the same principle. So a lot of people maybe get confused between probes and the switching, but effectively they're the same. So we have a set of, on the, on the left hand side here, we have a set of um, pins that come into the machine, that come into the uh, breakout board. And those pins are basically, we set them up for things like, like I was just saying, for probes and we set them up for limits and we set them up for e-stops and we use them to sort of give us uh, those. On the right hand side, there are some here that are actually outputs and they send out information. So for example, if you want to send out what speed you want a spindle to spin that, spin at, you can do that. Um, you can also use it to send out a signal for a relay to switch a relay on and off. So it can do that. There are some limitations. I have done a video about um, setting up um, relays with boards that only run five volts that don't have a built-in real relay functionality within the, that breakout board. Um, please have a look at that. In terms of what we're doing here today is I just wanted to go through this. It's a video that I said I would make. So the micro switch very quickly. How it's connected up here is we have ground that runs from common to ground. This switch has two positions. It has a position that's normally open. So you can connect it to say that this circuit will normally be open. When this lever goes down and gets pressed, it becomes normally closed. Or we can have it where the system is normally closed. And when it gets depressed, it becomes normally open. It breaks contact. So the way I've got this here for um, switches that you want to use for giving on an X and Y axis, limit switches I normally always run it in this kind of configuration where the circuit is always closed what it does from a safeguarding point of view if for whatever reason your switch is faulty and your switch is broken and it's broken connection it will give you an error if the cable gets cut or pulled it will give you an error so it just allows you to have a little bit more security to know that everything's connected and you've got a you've got good continuity along your system one of the downsides is the fact that because you're running it normally closed, like I was saying earlier, some of these boards only run at five volts. And what that means is that if you've got a very uh, noisy machine, when I say noisy, you're noisy from an EMR perspective where you've got, for example, a, a plasma cutter that isn't well shielded, um, or it's running close to very big motors, you could actually send voltage down the signal that causes it to give you errors. So that's where we can sometimes run into problems. Um, so again, uh, there is a thing that I wanted to do a video, which I haven't done yet. It was with regard to shielding and earthing of machines. I will get to that at some point. So let's just go to the next, next little one here. So <clears throat> you get, uh, here's the touch probes. So just wanted to talk about this very quickly. You get two types of touch probes. You get a touch probe that has a normally closed circuit and you have a touch probe that is a normally open circuit. So the one at the top here is a normally open circuit and the one over here is a normally closed circuit. 
and what that means is if you were to follow the diagram here you've got a you've got your obviously your your cable coming in here but it's making it's connected to a ball bearing and there's steel in between and there's a ball bearing and, and it just repeats itself all the way out now when this is straight down facing in that direction as you can see everything is touching so it actually allows the electricity to flow through which means that the signal is normally closed and you can use that to say if that is closed i'm touching nothing the diagram below here actually just illustrates and shows very quickly that as it moves along and the probe touches at a point when it gets to that point over there it breaks connection over there and when the connection breaks you are obviously the machine goes oh, there's a breaking connection but we know it's a probe so it knows that it's now found the limit of that probe and we then set in a few parameters to get it back to exactly where it was we believe it is because we do a little calculation with the tip size and all those very good clever things and then it tells us exactly to where we've gotten this is a different one which is a normally open so what we do is we tell the machine uh, the software that the circuit will always be open and then when the circuit closes and we get a response that the circuit is not closed that we've made contact so this is the way that you you want to you, the people do it um, for for example some cnc machines there's some danger because of the voltage that oh, sorry plasma machines the plasma puts out so i'll co cover that now very quickly but what this effectively essentially is is there's there are two cables that come out of here but this is on a separate circuit and that's on a separate circuit of the two cables that come out I'm going just back to this here so well the top will illustrate that so the base plate which is that there is connected to one one the ground let's say of the bob and the top where we got the little we were the little connection there will be connected to the the one of the pins the input pins into the bob <clears throat> what we then do is as the machine jogs down we touch and as it touches off it gives us an error again we it's a probe so we tell the probe to error and then reverse back and if you were to measure the height of the base and it touches we know that that the height between there and there will be let's say 20 millimeters that when that touched when it starts machining 20, milli 20 millimeters lower it's exactly where the surface of this material is so that's how we do it so i hope that just helps give you an idea of how to do these now the one thing about this that is very important both the contactors need to be completely uh, they need to be able to transmit electricity if they don't the circuit's not going to work when you do lots of plasma work and you do lots of plasma cutting there's lots of dust and sparks and over time you actually find that the plasma uh, rubbish or gunk that gets onto the tip is not conductive of electricity which means that it doesn't actually register that it's touched the metal and that can cause the machine to crash so one of the ways of getting around that is we use what they refer to as a floating head i've actually just done, done a video before this that shows the floating head i just moved it up and tried to explain it um, for everyone just to have a look to see at that this is great for for pieces of work like this here um, and let's move to the next the next section so what I've got here is I just wanted to talk about you'll notice that we don't have thousands of input pins so one way of getting around that is by allowing one to have and use two switches on one pin and how, this is how it's configured here if you've got mm, multiple switches or two switches and normally you'd run this on an X and a Y axis where you'd have one pin two switches on either end and you just run them in this in series this is a very good word because that's exactly how you'd run it you run it in series and if it if it goes in any direction and you have a you have it, it creates an e-stop we know exactly why and where and how to jog back from that you can also use it for homing because you know when it hits a certain switch on a home limit it will go back to where it should be so this is one of the ways of, of doing that and we do that on the normally closed you cannot do this setup normally open just doesn't work because both of them need to be closed at the same time for it to work so it has to be on normally closed so let me just run through that with you and why so we have it comes out here the ground goes into the ground there because it's normally closed the circuit is closed it runs up to ground again because it's normally closed the circuit is closed and it runs back out what that does is it just shows that the whole thing in its normal state is actually 
all closed and if one of these gets pushed, either that one or that one, it will break the circuit, which means that you'll get an error. If these were normally open, so I'd run like this, I go to normally open, and then from normally open, I go to normally open, and then from normally, I go to, sorry, ground, and then from ground to normally open. What that means is both of these need to actually be pushed at the same time in order for it to finish and close the circuit. So if one gets closed, that one's not closed, which means the circuit will stay open and you won't get an e-stop error. So you have to run it in a normally closed state. You cannot run it in a normally open state. Okay, let's move on to the plasma setup very quickly. So in terms of the plasma setup, this is exactly sort of as per previous that I was talking about. The plasma torch, the tip of the torch, would be the same as this here. So if we just go into this here, a little crocodile clip, there's a piece of aluminium which transmits the electrical signal and as it touches down it touches off and it goes up oh, there I'm at the right heart or not the right heart I've touched the material and then it can reverse back and you'd set it up just something like that which is what I explained earlier the thing about this and as I was saying it needs to be clean and clear of rubbish and muck so it does work and people do use it but it is something that has to be maintained you cannot have dirty tips because you can have false readings and you can crash your machine if you look at this here, this is the, the torch. Um, so one of the questions was, how do we get the torch to work and to do all these things? So every torch that's out there from the plasma machine as well. So the plasma machine, let's say it's like this here. I'll just draw the front of it. It'll have the two, it'll have a ground cable and we'll have where the torch is. It's normally a very small, it looks like a little smiley face. There's a very small um, pin there that normally has either two or three little pins that we would use and what this does is that these little wires here run into that that normally runs up the or the length of the the torch and you pull a trigger and when you pull that trigger the trigger then sets off and starts the arc now as opposed to running it to the torch what we can do is we can just take those those two so again it's exactly the same principle as this what so we would do so I'll just what we do is this here i just wanted to get some color so what we do is this here, so we'll take one of these connections, we'll run it to ground, which is how we go. And then we'll take the other one, and I'm just going to do the other one in red. And we'll take the other one and we'll run it to a an output here. So I'm just going to run it over there, and we'll call that an output. What it will do then is that output will trigger if you've got a relay, and by doing that it's the same as you pulling the trigger. I have done a video about relays that explains how the relay works but effectively what it does is it closes the circuit the same as a switch and then it fires the, the plasma for it to work. So as opposed to running it through the torch you just literally branch it off and you run it straight into your breakout board and it works like that. So one thing I want to discuss about this whole plasma breakout board story and this is a problem that one of, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the people that have been watching the videos has had this area over here so when that plasma torch comes on it puts out a huge amount of voltage now when you have things set up like this here what happens is, is if at all that voltage runs into these lines will completely destroy your breakout board not just the breakout board but anything that it's connected to now you'll notice the breakout board itself has got a parallel connection into the back of the pc and it just it just everything is literally connected to everything all your motors or your servos are connected here all your um, drivers are connected to that it's just not a good idea to do so my recommendation is the video that is going to be the part of this video is about a floating switch it is not brilliant for very soft and thin materials um, because obviously there's flex in, in the steel so as it goes down and touches but it's by far probably the safest for DIY CNC cutting that we do if you do want something that does proper touch off you actually need to invest in getting somebody to do it for you and you're going to pay a bit of money to get it done it's not a cheap little exercise because it requires quite a lot of circuitry in the background that actually stops the arc from running down and destroying the rest of your your equipment if you're going to set it up in that manner i hope this was useful for you guys um please if you have any comments and and that just let me know i appreciate you watching